If you are still using regular wood glue for all of your woodworking, you're gonna wanna see this. And look, so was I for years. All I used was regular PVA wood glue, tight bond original for everything. I figured, hey, if it's not broke, why fix it? Until about two years ago when I made this dovetailed box project, I used hide glue for the joinery and ever since then I have never again used regular PVA wood glue for the joinery in any of my woodworking. And if you've already heard of hide glue, I bet the first thing you heard was, it's reversible. It's not that reversible. I mean, you pretty much have to know what you're doing. I've tried it a couple of times and both times I ended up saying, hey, forget this. This is going to be faster and easier if I just cut this part off and remake it. But if you make furniture that's like joinery type furniture, not just things that are screwed together, that's more throwaway replaceable furniture, that can be really handy because if you add heat and moisture, the joint can be taken apart and repaired. For me personally, something that's a lot more important for the, that I like about the hide glue is that it doesn't mess up oil-based finishes. Uh, for some of my projects I have like through mortise and tenon joinery, these benches are a good example of that. And there were little cracks and gaps and stuff like that. And I fill that with a mixture of glue and sawdust. You can do glue and sawdust with PVA glue and it looks fantastic until you put the finish on it. Then it highlights any gaps that you filled. With hide glue, it's pretty much invisible unless it's like a big gap. In that case, probably the glue and sawdust mixture is not the best way to address um, an issue like that. Something else that's awesome is that it bonds to itself. So if you glue up a project, it's all dried up and everything, and then you notice that there's a couple spots that need to be, or something that needs to be repaired, or some gaps that need to be filled, or something like that, you can go ahead and do that, and the glue is gonna bond to itself. You're gonna be good to go, no problem. Also, there's no creep. Creep is, it's like, if you imagine plastic, if it's under tension over time, it actually stretches out a little bit. PVA glue does the same thing. Over time, under tension, it will stretch out and that's called creep. Uh, hide glue does not creep. It's, it, when it cures, it's rock hard. It's kind of like rock candy. Y'all remember the, on the stick, the rock candy, it, like it doesn't bend at all. If, you, if, it, if it bends, it just shatters. Now, something that is absolutely sweet about hide glue is that it's modifiable. Basically, you can change it to make it have a longer open time, give you more working time, or you can have it where it's gonna tack up and cure very quickly. I don't know about you guys, I end up getting glue everywhere. I wipe it on my jeans, my shirts and stuff like that. I've got a couple pairs of jeans that have Tight Bond 2 on them and let me tell you, that stuff never comes out. With hide glue, wipe it on your jeans, get it on your shirt, whatever, throw it in the wash, comes right out. Now something practical that's super useful about hide glue, especially in a small shop or people that don't have thousands of clamps, is that your clamp time is pretty low. The way I use hide glue and clamping, basically I will use clamps to fully seat the joint and then after a few minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that, I'll take the clamps off. The joint does not move anymore. With PVA wood glue, you're usually looking at like an overnight clamp, sometimes 24 hours in the clamps. But there are some considerations. And the first one, the most expensive and the most annoying one is that it can go bad. There's been times where I left a bottle of hide glue sitting out and I'm here in a garage shop, so it gets kind of hot here in Texas. But even when it hasn't been that hot outside, overnight or over, over a couple of nights, I've had bottles of this stuff go bad. So now I always keep it inside. And another thing I'd like to do is I prefer to make my own and I make it in a small batch that's not gonna, I'm not gonna have a lot left over. Another consideration is your temperature because hide glue basically cures in two phases. First, you have to use it hot. So as it cools, the liquid turns into like a gel. Then as water evaporates from the gel, it cures very hard. So if you have a cold shop, that temperature going from hot to cold is gonna happen a lot faster. That means it's gonna turn into a gel a lot faster. That's not really the end of the world. You can still clamp pretty good, but one, one area that you definitely would need to watch out for is like painting the glue and the reset, tail recesses on dovetails, because if that gels up, even with clamps, it can be difficult to fully seat those joints. 
So in that case, I would just paint the pen. So here's how I make just my universal basic hide glue recipe. Two tablespoons of dried glue granules, two tablespoons of water. I heat that up together until it's all combined. And then I add one teaspoon of urea. And then I continue to cook that for another half an hour until it's all cooked together very well. The urea, not urine, urea retains the water in the glue. It makes it take longer for the water to evaporate out of this mixture. Uh, it gives it a longer open time and I like it because without the urea, it tacks up pretty quickly. Uh, in the winter time, I modify this recipe a little bit. I'll go up to like two and a half tablespoons of water to two tablespoons of glue. And sometimes I'll bump up that urea just a little bit too. I like making my own glue. It's cost effective, it's fun, it's quick, it's easy to do. But if making your own glue is a little bit like, I don't wanna say weird, cause I don't think it's weird, but then again, maybe that says something about me. Uh, but let's just face it, if you're making your own glue, you've, you've been bit by the woodworking bug pretty bad. Um, so if you don't wanna make your own glue, I would at least recommend you try out the liquid hide glue from uh, Old Brown Glue. It's the best that I've tried that's, that you can commercially buy. The glue pot I use, by the way, I think that's been discontinued, maybe not, but basically you just need to warm it up to like 150, 160 degrees. You wouldn't want to go any hotter than that. A baby bottle warmer should work just fine for that. Um, any hotter than that, and as any good Texan would know, you go over 160 and that's when the collagen starts breaking down it's just like with barbecue right the brisket and pork butts and stuff the collagen in there starts breaking down when you get up above 160. same thing with the hide glue you get up over that temperature and you hold there long enough all those collagen it starts to like break down and it loses its effectiveness so you really don't want to overheat it uh, you can even if you have really hot tap water like 120 or something like that um, that'll that'll liquefy it too but glue pots baby bottle warmers something to bring it up to like 140 150 you'd be good to go all right, guys, I hope this video was helpful. I really love the glue. I'm, I get kind of excited about glue, which is pretty ridiculous. But uh, enjoy the video. Thanks for watching.